In this video, I'd like to talk about multiplying and dividing complex numbers using Euler's formula. And in previous videos, we looked at multiplying and dividing complex numbers when they're written in polar form, where the polar form of a complex number has the magnitude or the length of the complex number, its distance from the origin, multiplied by its direction, where this angle theta one, or theta in general, is measured relative to the positive real number axes. And when we multiply two complex numbers in polar form, we multiply their magnitudes, their distance from the origin, and we add their angles. And likewise, for division, we divide their magnitudes and we subtract the angle of the denominator from the angle of the numerator. And this is a useful way to multiply or divide complex numbers, but another perspective that we can use is using Euler's formula. And Euler's formula essentially involves this part right here, our direction. In fact, Euler's formula is defined as e to the i times pi theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times pi the sine of theta, where e, the base of this exponential function, is equal to 2.718.28, and this number is irrational, it'll go on forever. i, we know, is the square root of minus 1. And out of this equation, we do get the interesting result that when theta is equal to pi, then e to the i times by pi is equal to the cosine of pi, which is negative 1, plus i times by the sine of pi, which is 0. So e to the i pi is equal to negative 1, but typically this is written as e to the i times pi plus 1 is equal to 0. And this is one of the most famous equations in all of mathematics since it relates what could be argued as the five most important constants in math, e, i, pi, 1, and 0. But we can rewrite these complex numbers using Euler's formula instead of this expression for the cosine of the angle plus i times pi, the sine of the angle. So for z1, we could rewrite this as the magnitude or absolute value of z1 multiplied by e to the i times by theta 1. It's a more compact way of writing this number. And for z2, we can write this as the magnitude of z2 multiplied by e raised to the i times by theta 2. And when we now multiply the complex numbers, we can use the properties of exponents. So let's rewrite our formulas using this new representation. So let me just make a little bit of room here. And we can start by multiplying z1 by z2. And we're multiplying these two expressions now. And we will still be multiplying their magnitudes. We'll have the magnitude of z1 multiplied by the magnitude of z2. And then we will multiply these expressions for the direction. e to the i times theta 1 multiplied by e to the i times theta 2. And now we can use the properties of exponents. Since we know that when we have a to the x multiplied by a to the y, that as long as they have the same base in the exponential expressions that we just add the exponents. So let's do that here. This would still be the product of the magnitudes, absolute value of z1 multiplied by absolute value or the magnitude or the modulus of z2. And here they have the same base, so we will add the two exponents. We have i times by theta one plus i times by theta two. And of course we can factor out the i, so we can rewrite the magnitudes or the product of the magnitudes again. And then we have e to the i times by theta one plus theta two. And let me just quickly rewrite Euler's formula right here. And if we rewrite 
this exponential expression here using Euler's formula, we can go back to polar form. And we'd be able to see that this is equal to the product of the magnitudes and then multiplied by this Euler's formula where now our angle in this formula is really just theta one plus theta two. So we get the cosine of theta one plus theta two plus I times by the sine of theta one plus theta two. And we can see that it's equivalent to this formula we had already derived for multiplying two complex numbers in their polar forms. And likewise, we can do the same thing for division here. If we take our two complex numbers, we have Z1 divided by Z2. And again, we're rewriting these numbers in their exponential form. So let me go back up to that, where Z1 is just the magnitude of Z1 times by e to the i theta 1, and Z2 is the magnitude of Z2 times by e to the i theta 2. So when we divide these complex numbers here, we are still dividing their magnitudes, but now we will have the expressions for their directions using this Euler's formula. So we have the magnitude of z2 in the denominator times by e to the i theta 2. And we can essentially factor out this quotient here where we have the magnitude of z1 over the magnitude of z2. And now we have two different exponential expressions and we know using exponent rules that if we have a to the x over a to the y that if they have the same base, we subtract the exponents. So we have that this quotient here, these two exponential expressions, is just e to the i theta one minus i theta two. And if we want, we can factor out the i from this. So we rewrite the quotient of the two magnitudes and we have e to the i times theta one minus theta two. And if we want, we can convert it back to its polar form by essentially looking at Euler's formula here and calling theta equal to theta one minus theta two. And so we'd get the cosine of theta one minus theta two and plus I times by the sine of theta one minus theta two. And in the next video, we will look at specific examples of actually multiplying and dividing complex numbers using these formulas using Euler's formula.